We're in Genesis uh, chapter 17, Genesis 17, and um, we will move on to verse 7 and 8. <clears throat> and this is, um, this is uh, Abra Abraham has been hearing God speaking to him concerning uh, who he is first and <clears throat> concerning uh, that this is now going to be uh, not just a somehow believing ethereal uh, things in faith, but, um, but, but walking it out, walking with the Lord, being with the Lord. And so, um, and when I say being with the Lord, because we all talk about being with the Lord. We're going to be with the Lord. I'm with the Lord. I've been with the Lord. <clears throat> but what we're talking about here is we're talking about being with the Lord in a covenantal relationship that um, involves um, God's part and our part. And... Um, uh, and so we've been we've been working up to uh, verse seven and eight, so that we could get into the covenant as it pertained to Abraham and to his seed. So this is um, Genesis seventeen, verse seven, beginning with verse seven. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Okay, well, let's stop right there. <clears throat> um, he, you know, most of the story up to this point has been in relationship to uh, Abraham getting a seed. I want a son. I want a seed. I want the seed. Um, and... Uh, Really and truly, I don't think Abraham's focus has been much beyond that, regardless of what the Lord might have said uh, previous. Um, he's been focused on that one. And, and in a certain sense, I mean, yeah, rightly so, absolutely. Um, because without the one, then there's not going to be the others. Um, and Jesus, Jesus is that one. But this is describing now um, God making a covenant as if God would say to you, because the Abrahamic covenant, I keep ex expressing this, <clears throat> is the thing that, that um, Paul uh, uh, in Romans and Galatians and other places keeps pointing to as the covenant that we're in. If you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All right, so, um, so this, is, this is moving that forward, as it were. Um, my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations. Okay, so, you know, uh, God really is that way in, in this thing. He's not, not just with Abraham, but with us. He's not thinking in terms of <clears throat> um, just your life. Um, he's not thinking in terms of just your commitment uh, on Sundays or Sunday and Wednesday or Sunday and whatever. Whatever days you want to add in on that. But he's saying, uh, and the, your seed after thee, <clears throat> in their generations for an everlasting covenant uh, one of the things that comes to my mind in thinking of that is that in the tabernacle he set up the continual burnt offering continual burnt offering that that um, offering would rise to him would rise to him of Christ and him crucified or his son, the lamb, or that specific spirit that the first seed had, which seed is Christ, would be evidenced in us in a continual thing. So when God's making this, this covenant, he's not 
This isn't just like, okay, dump, 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 going to a, 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 a notary or something, and before them, and then the two parties, da, 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 and they stamp the thing, and they say, okay, and he, he signs it, and we say yes, and, and uh, okay, it's done. This is an ongoing, and when I say an ongoing, uh, it's, a, it's a walk, therefore it's ongoing, but it's a walk with the Lord in the way that the first seed, the firstborn, covenanted for all firstborns that will come afterwards. It would be like the continual burnt offering. It would be like the, um, the seven branch candlestick. Never, they never let it go out. They never let it go out. Um, but that's on our part, you see. That's meant to be on our part. We're, we're supposed to not let it go out, you know. Um, we're supposed to, to be the altar of the Lamb continual burnt offering giving Himself through us. And we'll see that as we get, I mean, it actually sort of explains that a little more. And certainly when you, when it, you go to the New Testament scriptures. Um, <clears throat> so, after the, in their generations. All right, I, I have no control over them when they're in their generations. But I have say, like Abraham had say to Isaac, and Jacob, and ultimately Joseph, um, in that you put the spirit, you, 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 you certainly uh, must exude that spirit. Um, and it can't just be in word only, obviously. Um, it has to be, well, what this will say is in our flesh. Um, not in word only, um, but by living demonstration of the sacrifice of Christ or a living demonstration of His nature, however you want to put it, because they're both the same thing. And it's, it is the Spirit of God who wants to capture Every, every one of the seed in their generation, if you will, every one that would represent the firstborn because they have the firstborn and uh, within them. So, <clears throat> and to thy seed after thee, and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. <clears throat> all right, so I, I wrote down... In these verses, the cloak of blessing given to Abraham is taken and it's spread over all that are meant to become firstborns. Okay? Well, it's not spread over Ishmael and it's not spread over Esau. Um, you can go on and on and on. It, and, and that meaning that you can be born into the family and and just be, you know, um, in the family, but not the firstborn. Well, the firstborn isn't us. Remember that. I, I continually show, share that. It, the firstborn is Christ. But it has to be Christ formed in us. It has to be the Father is getting that Son the firstborn. Or it's just words and it's just, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm probably a firstborn. Well, you're probably not. Because <laughs> you know? it's not really about us. It's about Him. And it's about, but it's not just about Him seated at the right hand of God. Uh, he could have just left being seated at the right hand of God. But He also came into us. But He didn't just come into us. For salvation, I mean, we, that's what we say. Well, when Jesus came into you, you were saved. Well, no, I, I mean, in, in a very real way. I mean, you were saved 
by the work of the cross what he did there and at the moment that you accept that work but Christ did come into you and me he did he did God didn't have to do that Jesus didn't have to do that to get us saved didn't have to do it to get us saved but he did have to do it for the father who views this thing as Christ in you the hope of glory his hope we always think it's ours but it's his too it's mainly his um, and so this cloak of blessing which is more than blessing it is an expression of the of the of El Shaddai's heart that he wants this to keep going in us during our lifetime. Keep going, keep going. See, because come on, there's a lot of lot of Christians that go to church on Sunday and don't have any thought really of Jesus during the week unless they get in trouble. I mean, the most you hear of Jesus is when they stub their toe and they go, "Oh, Jesus." Um, it is. Uh, but but that's the heart of the Lord isn't that you know we'll live comfortably in this world if you can but work hard to do it but you know no no I mean you can work hard you can work a job and all that with Christ in you but uh, he's wanting a covenant relationship with you and me that we could walk together with him and he's 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 starting it out with Abram and then gives him a name change in this chapter and with that name change he says this is what we're gonna do this is what we're gonna do we're gonna be together see we'd read it like oh no this is a commandment from the Lord no he's we're gonna be together we're going to I'm, I'm gonna be a God to you and you're gonna be my people and you know I will live in you and that's that's quoted in several different places uh, in the Old and New Testament. I'll be a God to you and I will live in you and walk in you. And Okay, so there's that relating in such a manner that it's life-giving. And it's, and it's um, let me just say it like this, because uh, hopefully we'll get to some scriptures that, that really are spelling out the things that I'm saying right down the line. Um, give and take. It's a give and take. But what is the give and what is the take? See? Well, I don't know. I mean, does, do we know? Do we know that? Do we know? Have we heard? Have we heard his heart? Have we heard from his heart? Has his heart reached our heart? Or, or have we, you know, become just... Christians on earth that have embraced the Christian religion as if that's all there is to it. And God bless them. I'm, you know, I believe if you're born again, you're in the family. So I'm not, I'm not making them outcast or anything. But to me, it's the exact same thing which we talked about early on about firstborns, which is the same class. In Exodus, when the Passover lamb did not die for all of Israel there. He died for the firstborn because the, the death angel was going to pass over and kill all the firstborn. Wasn't going to kill all Israel. And the blood on the doorpost was for the firstborn. And the death angel looks and sees the blood and passes over and does not, what? Kill, not Israel, but the firstborn of Israel. And so, through the death of the Lamb, they came out, the firstborn. But through the deliverance that God offered that, that was a result of that, but they didn't understand that, the rest of Israel, who were not firstborns, came out and were delivered and rejoiced and whatever. Okay? This, this is the same class, and it's the same. See, the deal is that Exodus is yet to come for Abraham and all this. It hadn't come yet. But we know, 
we can see, we can look ahead, we can know our Bibles, and we can look ahead. And when we look ahead, we go, oh my God, this is a pattern that God put through the whole Bible and wants us to, to have it, to, um, to partake, partake with Him in it. So, um, the Lord means for it to be personal. Personal. He does. He means for it to be personal. First, personally between Him and Abraham. And then personally, one-on-one -on -one with Abraham's seed as it comes in their generations. See? What a wonderful thing. Okay. So now if you doubt that or if you don't understand that and you're not sure how the magnitude of that is, then I, ch here's, I have a challenge for you. Okay? This isn't one of those YouTube challenges. Uh, this is a you do this and you'll know the Lord a little bit better. Go through the whole, let's just say the, particularly the Old Testament. Go through the Old Testament and look up every time Abraham and the covenant God made with Abraham saved Israel or covered Israel or was a blessing to them. Um, and you'll be shocked that long generations, long far from Abraham, God remembers his covenant with Abraham and he does certain things. Okay, So he's, he's in it. He's into it. Um, you know, if you will, he's walking. He's still walking. He's going, where are y'all? You know? <laughs> so, um, uh, again, he speaks of what will one day come in the realm of time. Because at this point, he hasn't even had Isaac. But he's already there. See, because to him, you know, we, we let time control us. It does. We let time control us. We schedule our lives based on time. Uh, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do this. I'm just telling you we do that. God doesn't do that, though. See what I mean? It's like, okay, walk. He's just walking, you know. And He's wanting us to walk with Him, you know. Um, uh, I always think of Enoch. And Enoch walked, if, walked with God, and then he wasn't because God took him. You know, it's like, okay... You walked with me while you were down here. Now, you can almost say, you walked with me while you were down here. Now you're going to fly to me. So, um, so this, is, this is personal with him. Um, we say, well, my religion is personal. You know, you hear that a lot. Well, I would witness to people, but my religion is personal. Or better. Uh, I have a personal rela uh, relationship with Jesus. Okay, but what do people mean? I mean, I'm just trying to be real. Can I do that? What do people mean when they say that? They're talking about their own life. They're not talking about his life. They're not talking about, uh, uh, I have a personal relationship with Jesus, and, and um, uh, when I need help, I pray, and He comes and He helps me. And when I go to church, I talk to Him and I worship Him. And But all of that is centered on a temporal situation that won't be here forever. But God, the things that He's declaring of Himself, and therefore of us, as He spreads his blanket over us, the way that Boaz did to Ruth. In his mind, we're his, you know. I mean, Ruth, that was it, baby. You are now, you belong to Boaz. They're what? He just put a blanket on me. No, 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 no. He covered you with himself. And he covered you where you're hid in him now. It says that, Colossians. All right, so uh, uh, 
Again, he speaks what will, what will one day come in the realm of time. He will become the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm going to mention that several times in here because um, he's, you know, it's, it's like Abraham doesn't know uh, Isaac or Jacob yet. He don't know who that is. God hadn't said it to him yet, but that's what he's going to become. He says, I will be your God. But again, he's not going to be. He's not going to be just your God, Abraham. This is going to keep going. And you need to walk with him in such a way that it can keep going. Uh, verse uh, beginning with verse 9 and God said unto Abraham thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations hmm? there it is see before he mentioned the generations and he was just saying I will be their God and you know but here he's saying they will keep my covenant thou and thy seed after thee in their generations okay so it is personal. It is eternal. But if you treat it like it's not personal, personal, you know, like he doesn't really feel that way or you don't know, so you just treat him like like the, the supreme being instead of all the things that he's, he's declared, um, then... Um, you know, you don't, you, you miss all of the covenantal things that we would say, well, th those are special promises to Abraham. We miss all the covenantal things that are precious to him. And that's why he brought it up. Because he wanted us in that way. He wanted us in that way. Or he didn't want you at all because you will, we'll eventually read down here and go, well, if you're not circumcised, then sakalavaka. Okay. So, uh, and God said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my com covenant therefore and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after you every man child among you shall be circumcised okay all right this he's saying this is look this is the deal this is what i want i want an application of the cross to be so real that it's in your flesh. Not in your mouth. Teaching. Not in your mind. I know the doctrines. Um, but practical. In your flesh. Alright. Uh, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Um, I have a note here. So in the previous verses, God said that he will make his covenant with them. But in these verses, God wants them to keep his covenant throughout their generations, but does not explain their part in it until now. See, I will make my covenant with you. I will make my covenant. That's what he's been saying all this time. Well, now he's going, okay, I'm making my covenant with you. This is it. Well, what, what is it? It's going to be the cross. It's going to, it's not going to be um, God looking like Santa Claus, bringing in a big bag full of everything we could ever want or need. It's going to be a declaration of Christ crucified that is manifestly in your flesh. Okay? 
Um, in other words, in the past, they only thought things would come about simply because God promised. Because that's the way it looked in the faith part, but this is in the walk part. Um, without any involvement on their part. However, here we see that he wants a, part a participation. He wants. He wants us to participate with him in the cross and in the crucified, in the, the Lamb. Um, not of works, a participation, not of works, but that the sign of it would be in their flesh. Okay, so uh, keep your place here, but let's flip over to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, and we want to see the New Testament version of this. Uh, now, it's mentioned in, in Colossians and a bunch of other places, but here's a really, really good place because it mentions a lot of the particulars that are mentioned in this covenant uh, in, the New, in New Testament scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and let's start at verse 5. Okay, for we preach not ourselves. Okay, well, we go, okay, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to preach myself. I'm going to preach Christ. Okay, but, you know, the whole point is, is that this isn't about you. It isn't about me. It's about Him. It's about Him in us. But it's about Him in us in a particular way, which has to do with circumcision, which has to do with the reality of this thing being in our flesh. So, we, we don't preach ourselves. This is the one we preach. I mean, you, it'll get into it. Always buried about in the body of the dying, um, um, delivered unto death, uh, mortal flesh, all this kind of stuff. That's, that's not us. That's Him in our flesh. That's Him. And we'll, we'll see the verses here in just a second. But Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts. Okay, so that's, that's a, a covenant. That's a covenant relationship. Is that there has to first be the circumcision of the heart. And there has to be a, the first, at first, or eventually, where he shines in our hearts. And folks... That actually, you can check this out in the Greek, that actually isn't acting as if Jesus is out here and then he shines into our hearts. The actual word or the way that this is being said in the Greek is that he shines out of our hearts. That's what he's wanting. An outshining of the Lamb, of the given one. Now, what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, we can, we can put any definition on that we want. We can just, you know, well, he wants outshining. And, you know, when I walked into church service, I just glowed. And people walked up and said, oh, brother, your eyes. I see Jesus in your eyes. You know, I don't, is, is Jesus walking around in your eyes? I'm just asking. <laughs> you know. See, if you ever wonder why I get in trouble, it's because I I say stuff. But, yeah, okay, so someone who's really, you know, been with the Lord, and, you know, you can tell, but, but it's not Jesus in your eyes. It is, it is you um, being influenced by that. If you want to see Jesus, you have to see him in the verses that follow. That's the stout shining. Bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. The things that... But stay with the context. Stay with the context. Okay? Uh, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay, so there is this reality of the, the, the true glory. Not the glory that we give. We give you glory because you saved us. We give you glory... I mean... 
do we give him glory based on anything that was true before the foundation of the world because he was that or is it all based upon once he made the world and then showed up here for us what he's doing for us see there's a glory folks there's a glory to the lord that is so beyond the universe and all the mysteries that are there that it, it seems to me sometimes that few have glimpsed few have uh, had his heart affect their heart so much that they they'll no longer preach themselves or it'll be about them um, I mean you can preach Christ and that be about you did you know that you can you can preach Christ in such a way that really it's about you it's about what you know it's about how deep you are it's about how spiritual you are um, and and you're exuding more of you than you are the Lord but that's why it can't be we don't preach ourselves we preach Christ it has to be more than the recognition that the ourselves that enters into this thing is in the verses that follow also bearing about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh it made in in the flesh in the flesh so um, next verse ah but but we have this treasure. Uh, here's the way some people say, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. No, stop preaching yourself. <laughs> I mean, you can say that, but the but the 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 thing that is so glorious about it is that the, he's the treasure. There's a treasure. It's him in the verses that follow. That's what it's talking about. It's describing all of this to introduce you to the things that he's saying as he goes down the line here and answers them in, uh, from verse 10 through 12. And he says, okay, here it is. Here's what the, uh, here's what the treasure looks like. Uh, here's... Uh, Here's what not preaching ourselves <laughs> is about. Um, here's what being servants for Jesus' sake uh, pertains to. Here's what the outshining is when I show forth. So death worketh in me, but life in you. When we show forth the death that works in us, that brings forth life in others. Okay? Because hear this ultimately it's not about death it's not the big deal is not about death the big deal is death works in me so that life can work in someone else which is the way Jesus lived and the way that he was on the cross that's the only thing that's truly bringing forth life life I'm not saying people can't go out and win people to the Lord, but, you know, where's the life? Where's the impartation? Where's the participation in the covenant? You know? All right, so, um, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God. Okay, so, power of God. The power of God, the excellency of the power may be of God. The power of God is bearing about this death so that life can come forth. Okay, you say, well, I don't see that. Well, go look at the cross. The power there was the death he went into to bring forth life to others. Okay. Uh, and not of uh, uh, the power may be of God and thank God not of us not us not us not of us not us 
both. Not of us and not us. Um, did God choose to totally annihilate us so that it would be Christ? No. He chose to put us to death so that we could be a habitation of God through the Spirit. In other words, He could have a home. And He chose that we'd be that home. You say, well, why didn't He choose a mansion? I mean, well, why didn't He choose that when he, Jesus was born in the earth? He chose a barn. He chose an earthen vessel. Same difference. We should be glorified that He put that treasure in us. That, that barn should have been singing with the angels. Our God, Jesus, he's born in me. <laughs> you know, the manger should have been going, glory to God. You know, I've got him wrapped up right here. Oh, no. You think I'm crazy. But I mean, I could, I bet, you know, it mentions, you know, if the, Jesus said, if, well, if you don't praise me, then even these stones will cry out. I just think that that everything in heaven and earth declares the glory of God on some level. You say, can you explain that? No. I just believe it because it's in the Word. And I, I think like that, that barn and that manger... Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they declare the glory of God? Praise God. Um, so, so here we go, earth and vessel. Uh, we are troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. Why? You got a treasure in earth and vessel. The very verse that went before this. Okay, your 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 peace. He's made unto you peace. Your redemption, He's made unto you redemption. Your sanctification, He's made unto you sanctification. All of those, your hope, all of those things, He is. And, and so, um, not, uh, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, we are not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed always bearing about and so he's tying this bearing about the dying of the Lord into things that we would say I need to pray these things away um, uh, troubled distressed cast down those kind of things well, I need to pray those away and he's saying these are the very things that are you can be bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in I mean I mean, there is no jump in verses. You know, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We, the earthen vessels, are distressed and troubled and da 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 da, all that kind of stuff. Verse eight um, and nine, uh, verse ten, uh, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. See, this is this is part of the glory that he's talking about. This is talking about the reality. Of God getting the glory that he wants. All right. So, let's do that. Verse 10. Always bearing. Oh, always bearing. Hmm. And circumcision, this sign shall be in your flesh, so that you will always be bearing this in your mortal flesh, in your body. Always bearing about in the body. Always bearing about. You're bearing it. You're bearing it in your body. But but it's beyond the sign of circumcision, which was the physical act of doing that, so that the reality of it is working in us. Always bearing about. The dying of the Lord Jesus. that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Okay? The life. Why do we bear the death? That the life, that the life, that the life, life comes out of death. 
we look at the cross, we say life comes out of death. He died, and then life came out of that, and God exalted him. Well, this is basically saying this is an ongoing thing. This is called the covenantal walk with God. It's, so we say, well, it's a one-time thing. Well, this is, there's nothing one time about this. This is still him dying. I mean, it says the dying of the Lord Jesus. See, if it was just the dying referring back to him on the cross, it wouldn't call him the Lord Jesus. He didn't become Lord until he rose. And the Lord Jesus was still dying and giving himself so that others' death can work in me, but life in you. Um, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live, I just love this, the wording is all, it just, it'll just trip you up if you don't really understand the covenant. For we which live, yeah, we which live, are always de delivered unto death. We which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. We're going to do this for Jesus' sake. We're going to bear this for Jesus' sake. We're going to do this because we believe life comes out of death. We're going to do this because we, we want to be in covenant relations and actually walk it out and it be practical in my flesh, not in my doctrines. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that we're, we're delivered unto death, that the life also of Jesus... It's, this is that part right there is nothing more than a repeat of Galatians 2:20. Galatians 2:20 is Jesus. You know, first uh, the reality is that you know Jesus died for us that we might have life, and then Paul sees that reality. <laughs> I'm so used to saying Peter now. <laughs> Paul sees that reality, and he um, uh, he says. That's, that's not right. I should be of the same spirit. So he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. He's saying, I no longer live that Christ may live. That's what this is saying. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Um, that the life, that the life of Jesus may be made manifest in mortal flesh. Mortal flesh. See, that's not, that's not a doctrinal doctrine. That's not a, 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 a cross doctrine. That's the belief that this thing ought to be in our flesh, just like the covenant relationship of circumcision. And here we are, we're cutting off our flesh on a regular basis, if you will. We're, we're making sure that Jesus is being seen. And then uh, uh, verse 12, so then, so then, I love this. This is like Paul says all this great deep stuff that takes you years and years and years to even understand the wording. And you finally get it and then he goes, so then death works in us and life in you. You go, oh, so then this is, this is it, huh? Yeah, so then this is it. Death's going to work in us so that life can work in others. Praise God. Okay, so we're not going to go back to uh, Genesis tonight. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm doing better because I'm not preaching an hour, but it still always seems short to me. Like, it doesn't seem like a whole 45 minutes has passed. But maybe to you, since you're having to look through technology and hear it on a, maybe a speaker's not so good, you're going, God, I wish this guy would just stop. Okay, I'm stopping. <laughs> Love you guys. Please be in prayer for Kelly, for this equipment, for all the work that she does for you and others. It's almost like death works in her. that life may come to all of us. So please, please, please be in prayer. And if you've if you got any secret things that could help this whole system, then let her know. But it's, it's worked perfect until the enemy started attacking. All right, let's pray. Father, we just, uh, again, are awed by 
hymn of the covenant, the hymn of it. The hymn, H-I-M, of the covenant. We're awed by him. We're awed by the, the, the selfless lamb spirit that even after his death, even after he arose, even after he became Lord of all, he still wants us to bear about his dying for others. Father, it's not that our, our bearing that about is redemptive in the sense of that we could die the way Jesus did and it be redemptive. No, this is not talking about us dying the way Jesus did. It's talking about Him, the risen Lord, being able to give Himself through us as earth, earthen vessels. Lord, we want it to be real. Father, we want it to be practical. We want it in our flesh. We want the firstborn to have place in us. And we believe that your every intention and movement is to bring that about. We have but to listen, to yield, and to fall at your feet and recognize you as the treasure and that we're just the vessel through whom you will work. Thank you for your glorious glory. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.